Now for the Four Seasons. No, that's not a weather warning about this bank holiday, but a piece of music which is very close to the heart of our next guest. Yes, the famous Vivaldi score will feature, among other pieces, in a tour by the violinist Nicola Benedetti in September. But before we talk to her, let's see Nicola in action at the BBC proms earlier this month. Nicholas here now watching that with us. In sport, they call it a game face, don't they? Put your game face on. <laughs> oh, Have you got a violin face? I really do, and I don't <laughs> like looking at it at all. <laughs> but is it because you're, it's, it's sheer concentration? I mean, that... Just, yeah, concentration, and um, you're not aware of how you look when I mean, you're thinking about so many things and just totally focused. And um, also, but there's something really unnatural about how you hold the violin and the way it sits under your chin. It just, I don't think it's the most flattering. Thing, but oh. I just don't don't watch. <laughs> you were also kind of jumping along as we were going there. Yeah, because it's a fun it's a fun piece. I mean, it's it's incredibly difficult actually. That that last couple of minutes of that concerto is. Um, what is that one you were playing? That then? was the Corn Gold Violin Concerto, a piece I recorded a few years ago. Um, but it's um, a Corn Gold wrote a lot for film, so it's it's kind of it has a lot of film themes in it, and that last movement is kind of um, just. Fun and games. Well, given what you just said about it not looking particularly appealing when you're playing the violin, I feel a bit loath now to say, do you mind playing a bit? <laughs> but you said you would. Is that OK? Yeah, I'm going to play a little um, snippet from The Four Seasons. Obviously, there's lots and lots of movements involved in that piece, but um, one of the most magical moments happens just before the end. So it's the fourth concerto, um, uh, The Winter. And I'll just play. It's kind of the most famous theme. <laughs> Face uh, <laughs> you look fine. You look great. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm always struck when you see someone playing an instrument mm. like the violin close up, just how physical it is, how much right. work, you know, how much with your fingers and, and how, how physical it is. Yeah, it is, it is a very physical instrument but doesn't require muscle strength. It's very subtle. The way you try to understand how to produce sound on the violin, you're basically trying to tap into your own natural weight as much as possible. So it's not like something that you can. It sort of equate like I'm going to develop my muscles in this way and that. It's it's a very very subtle journey of of just like how how can you feel the weight of your fingers and try to relax as much as possible, um, and under all that pressure that you feel on stage, it's not you know it's not straightforward. But yeah. and where did it all start for you then? I started when I was four years old. Um, my parents don't listen to any classical music and neither did anybody in my family really. Um, they do now, but only through me and my sister playing. So my sister saw a photo of a violin and just fell in love with how it looked actually. And then at some point came across somebody play it and just asked my mum repeatedly for about four years. And finally she agreed to let me and my sister begin together. So. Do you play other instruments? I do 
not. <laughs> well, you I mean, officially, you no, no, I don't. No, no, no. I mean, I, I could like play a couple of chords on a piano, but it's so terrible. I would never do it in front of anybody. Oh, really? So it doesn't you don't you don't play other uh, stringed instruments, for example? No, n I mean, I could I could maybe kind of make a noise in a viola, but you also wouldn't want to hear that. It's not. <laughs> and you are, you're going on tour shortly? Yes, in September. Yeah, it's an 11 date tour all across the UK. Um, we're going to the Royal Albert Hall, we're going to um, Leeds, we're going to Birmingham, quite a few venues in Scotland, Glasgow and, and Edinburgh, and um, we'll be featuring the, the four seasons. And tell me, when you when you step onto somewhere like the stage of the Royal Albert Hall, mm. do you, I mean, you've done it many times before. Yes. What's that like? Is that a real? Is it still the, the tingling up the spine moment? Oh, totally. It's it's one of the most daunting but welcoming halls. It always feels very contradictory. It's very large because we don't use any amplification in there. So to produce a sound that's all acoustic in that hall is quite a challenge. You've got a long way to project to. Um, but especially with the proms, it's like you, you feel like everyone is so with you on stage and. Um, the kind of togetherness, the feeling at one with the audience is, is it's really like no other place. So. Uh, and what about the opening of the Commonwealth Games? Because you played there as well, didn't you? What was that, that was, like? That was another scale altogether, but I was definitely amplified for that. Yeah, <laughs> it was in a you. stadium, yeah. Um, it, was, it was an amazing experience. I mean, a violinist that plays classical music never experiences people singing along to what you're playing on the violin. It just doesn't happen. Um, but I was playing Loch Lomond, um, and I was in Scotland, um, and the whole stadium was singing along with me so I, I got a bit of a you know I don't know what pop singers must feel when everybody knows the words to their song so and uh, just a word about some you know someone's watching this and they're thinking you know what? that sounds lovely I'll give it a try on the violin yeah it's a very hard instrument right at the beginning is it not because it, it almost always sounds awful when you first I was start. gonna say watch out for that first year at least it, it doesn't sound pretty for a while but if you persevere I w